Today's class, we are learning about finances, strategy, and tactics. We go through from knowing what it's about, categories and risk, and how to assess uh, financial preferences. Also, uh, we learn about gifts and grants, debt financing, how to evaluate it, and also equity financing. And, uh, and how to identify sources of capital for your business. And we end the class with appraised stocks and bonds, uh, as an, uh, looking at them as an investment alternative. When financing, it's, uh, it's an act of providing or receiving funds, capital for a purpose. For a business, we also need financing as an entrepreneur. We cannot actually uh, run a business, start or run a business without finance. So, just like every other thing in this uh, economically in the life we are, so also for a business, we need uh, financing for for capital. We need financing for int- uh, land, labor enterprise and any every all the four factors of production we need we need we need the uh, finance for it okay the, f- the capital itself is needed to actually achieve all aspect of uh, of the business so this is why finance it's very important there has to be provision for it now what are the provisions entrepreneur can use home equity credit cards or fund from friends or family. These are ways at which we could actually uh, secure financing. Sometimes when these resources are not available, the entrepreneur can look into debt or uh, equity financing. Debt or equity financing. That means you try to uh, borrow money, okay? This we will be discussing in the later part of the class, how we can actually, the ways and methods which we can borrow money, how you can actually look and weigh the best, uh, ask the best uh, method of borrowing that will suit the business. Then we also have what they call uh, uh, equity financing. Means you, anyway, let me pause on this. These are in the, uh, in, as the class goes on, we learn about this. Now we're going to look at uh, uh, the aspects of financing. I mean, there are three ways to finance a business version. Let's say, for example, you do not have enough funds in your service. The first one is to obtain gifts and grants. You can actually get money uh, through this way. Or you borrow money. This is debt. and Or you exchange a share of the business for money. It means you sell a part of the business. I mean, you meet people and you make them raise money and they will be part of the business. That means they are also shareholders, they are owners of the business. But in this aspect, you must ensure that these are people that understand the meaning of uh, equity. It means they will both share in the profit and loss of the business. They are not just uh, lenders, they are not just borrowers. Who they don't they don't consign the sales if the business is losing money or the business is bankrupting. Okay, for equity financing means if you are part owner of the business, you are also part and parcel of the profit sharing and the loss sharing. Now moving on, we're going to look at uh, creditor. An aspect of how often do uh, how often small businesses really fail. Now, creditors, creditors are person of nature that is owned money. People you own money. People you are supposed to uh, uh, pay to. I mean, people who may we have debtors. We have creditors. Debtors are those who own you your business or who own you money, and creditors are those you, you own means you are supposed to probably they are your suppliers they supply all, all the uh, materials you use for your uh, production 
of or carrying out your business so this kind of people you must pay they are you own them they sorry yeah you own their money so you must pay them they are totally different from uh, the debtors who own you now we have business failure according to uh, uh, bus uh, business failure by Doon and Brash, Brash Street that's the uh, the which operates the largest and oldest commercial credit rating service in the United States has business termination with losses to creditors now when your business is terminated it's a big loss to your creditors so this is why that uh, as creditors mm -hmm. the uh, your creditor has to be uh, has to be paid okay and they must ensure that uh, because they actually they are also facing a big risk in their in in doing business with you so there's likely that they will get to lose their money and their their goods or services will not be paid for so though entrepreneurs are risk takers but these people they are creditors whether your business is making profit or not they have to be paid because they are most times your supplier you own them but like i earlier said creditors are different from equity finance okay i mean for equity exchange i mean people who exchange the shop the business for them is is the equity uh, equity uh, financing they are different the equity financing they are people means when you uh, they they share almost same thing with the profit making and the uh, uh, risk taking of the business and also the loss but for the creditors it's not they they, they don't share in the loss when you they, you are you are meant to be paid they are meant to be paid when you they supply you goods or they they do carry out business with you they are not supposed to share in the loss okay so the 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 creditors usually they try to they they always weigh the chances okay i mean it's just like for example you intend to uh, do business with someone supply goods on credit supply goods and materials on credit or whatever thing you supplying service you always try to weigh and pursue the opportunity the chances of success so creditors do not uh, have to take risk in uh, doing business so this is why that the uh, creditors needs to be paid okay no matter the age because when creditors are not paid the business cannot go on the business will be uh, will be at uh, at a standstill because most times the creditors supply these goods and they supply the materials for the business they supply the goods and materials for this business and when they are not paid they cannot uh, supply so what are the best type of financing for business the best form of financing for business are uh, before we look at this, let's look at risk tolerance. The amount of risks or threats of loss that an individual is willing to sustain, that's what they call risk tolerance. So financing is not just one size fits or proposition, okay? So it's something one has to actually uh, uh, weigh. Each venture has unique requirements and circumstances along with the structure and challenges of the selected industry. So these are things one has to look at, I mean the requirements, the circumstances, and things like that. The lenders and investors alike insist that entrepreneurs have their personal resources involved before they put in additional funding. So uh, this will the before you can actually uh, get funding for your business the. The lenders and investors, they will, they, they will, they look at it, they look at business and they wait. We are going to learn and learn and look at the criteria they look, they look at for credit uh, worldliness. Now, there are three ways for a business to raise the capital it needs to grow. The first is finance with earnings, means your earnings. Finance with equity means uh, you sell stock privately or on the stock market to raise capital. And the third is finance with debt, means uh, 
you look at the credit worthiness and that of his owner, whether to uh, if money can be borrowed or lent. So it could either be any of these three. Sometimes in entrepreneurs, you can as well combine all three methods: financing with earnings, adding up with uh, uh, finance with equity, and also borrowing. You could be in either of the, any of the two, or you could also just use one of it. These are the three ways to raise the capital that you need to grow your business. Now let's look at gifts and grants. When we talk about gifts and grants, we are supposed to look at things like tax abatement, legal reduction in taxes. Okay, these are legal reduction in taxes. Then we also all these are other classes of gifts and grants. Uh, sometimes government grant this this uh, tax abatement. They actually grant it to so entrepreneurs. They reduce their tax. Okay. Now we also have what they call tax credit, direct deduction of taxes. This is also different from tax abatement. This one will be direct reduction of tax, and also the government also grant this. Or the uh, this depends on where you carry out your business, where you operate. Sometimes the government of that region or area or the country, as the case may be, they grant tax holiday to. I mean to support new businesses so that they can grow and become successful, to motivate people to go into businesses. The opportunity for gifts and grants to businesses do not just, uh, uh, they exist, okay? Like I already said, they have exist in different parts of here. They are not fixed. Every government has adopted this ties to actually carry this out. So, uh, apart from tax credit and tax abatement, we have informal gifts, which includes uh, items such as cash, free use of facilities and equipment, or paid labor by friends and family, and forgiveness of all deferral of debts. All these are ways in which uh, uh, all these are gifts that can support and help your business grow. Now let's look at the official gifts. We have the furnish, which are the formal gifts. We have the furnish primary by the federal government, maybe primary for specific types of investment, to stimulate designated geographic area to support particular uh, population. So uh, yes, government they actually support this. Uh, they, they give them materials. They give them equipment. Okay, they and they give them for free. Or sometimes some of these materials and equipment are subsidized for them so that they can actually use them for production for them. This uh, subsidy is very common with agricultural production. Entrepreneurs are into agriculture. They get this kind of subsidy in things, materials that are used for agricultural uh, production purpose, probably farming or agro production. Then we can also uh, we also have the peer to peer or person to person lending. This peer to peer or person lending is a kind of a crowdfund uh, funding. I mean crowdfunding where people come together and they try to crowdfund each um, each, each other. Okay. They match the the uh, the kind of uh, the kind the individual lenders are matched with uh, individual borrowers and organizations. They pair each other up, those that have the money to finance and those that are in need of it. So they do this. So when we say crowdfunding, crowdfunding is the use of business capital from many individuals to finance a venture. Then we have also what they call debt financing. Uh, like I said, we also have businesses that uh, finance debt. I remember mentioning this in our last class. How people actually uh, finance debts. They take up the debt and they pay you off. And sometimes they pay you less than the actual amount that you are owned. And because they, they are businesses, okay, like most other businesses, they are set up to make profit. So they are going to get themselves paid uh, from the stress they would have to face or the challenges they have to face to get the money from the debtor, okay, from your debtor. So what they do is that they sometimes they come they come to agree, agreement and they pay you less than what you are owed and they go after the debtor to collect the money. And these are a way of okay of doing debt finance. Many business have some combination of debt and equity financing. You know the one that is uh, most suitable for you as an entrepreneur for you to adopt, okay? And uh, uh, 
Another one challenge that you may face is that me what type of debt financing to pursue. Okay, because uh, sometimes some of the debt financing might not be suitable. Okay, so you have to, it's a kind of uh, demanding of you to know which one best suits you based on the, your business type and life cycle stage. Okay, the type of business you're doing and the, the community too. Okay. All these are things that are at place when you make this type of decision. Your kind of business, the community, the government, the, gov the government, how do they regulate all of this, okay? Your personal finances, your wealth, your preferences, and the options available to you, all these are things that you have to consider before you choose uh, the method of your debt financing. We also have different uh, types of lender. These are also uh, debt financing types of lender that we have various rates and fees. They give you the various rates and fees. They borrow hard money to people, entrepreneurs, and so who need them. So it is worthwhile to compare the total package costs. Their interests are never the same, and sometimes their requirement criteria differs from one to another. So these are things you should look up on. It's not about the willingness for them to give you the money. What are the uh, the criteria in uh, borrowing money from these uh, lenders? Okay, we have lenders like shark loans. Those ones are usually very very intolerant intolerant to delay in payment or not meeting up with payment. So. Like what would like like uh, most uh, uh, most uh, entrepreneurs are advised, they are mostly told to go to the former institution for borrowing money, because the consequence that comes with the likes of the uh, the uh, informal way might not be suitable for the. Uh, for your business and might be very very risky most times using the shark loans to borrow money might be quite easy but then the the price you have to pay in not meeting up with your debt are usually also very informal and the they are informal and can be very very uh, damaging okay so this is why most entrepreneurs are encouraged and uh, advised to go to the former institutions which are recognized and uh, are very, very formal in their dealings in lending out money. So all of this has to be co compared and well before you can uh, actually decide which of the lending lenders you're going to use for your business, for your to grow your business. Then we have also sometimes convertible debts. These are when debts are turned into equity. Sometimes lenders, they over time, they see they lend money to you for your business and the business has grown so well, so successful. And instead of taking back the money from you, they will decide to use it to buy equity. So they will be part owner of the business. And sometimes this could even be before even, this will be an agreement. Uh, at the beginning of the business, they tell you, oh, we've given you this money, but I would want to, in later, after five years' time, I would rather prefer to be part owner of the business instead of you paying me back. All these are open choices and options, uh, entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, you can choose from as it best suits you and your business. Okay, this is just, um, uh, it's, um, this is just the data which is the financial partners and credit market experience a comparison by race and ethnicity for the u.s employer firms okay for small business administration so this you can take a look at uh, the the different ways people borrow money okay we have the bank financial institution loan a lot of people borrow money from there you can see that is up to like 70.9 percent compared to others then the little uh, few of them get grants which is zero at 0 0.3 percent then uh personal credit cards a lot use the credit cards to run their business you know we have debit cards we have credit cards so they could actually use this then we have owners known and all of this the in the us this is how it's at place okay so it shows that a lot people a lot of uh, the entrepreneur a lot of firms they go for the bank financial institution loan and a few get grants, okay, grants and give. This is it, and um, 
you could select the types of business and debt financing. You see, we have commercial loans, we have personal loans, we have leases, peer-to-peer -peer loans and bonds. For the uh, uh, commercial loans, it could, these are typically provided by bank or other financial institution and the terms at which you can pay, it, you know, you must look at the terms of each of this loan to see how it best suits you. You have up to 20 years, up to 70 years, and uh, one year or less to pay in some, depend on the type, the common type, the type you are going for. It could be for real estate, it could be for equipment and uh, improvement, it could be for working capital, it could be for assets, okay? It could also be for, uh, it could be for uh, accounts receivable factory. Then, look at the personal loans. This is for short-term fixed repayment. These are for short-term. It's very, very important as an entrepreneur, you pay, uh, you pay attention, okay? You must prioritize the terms of any type of loan you decided to go for because you must try to see how suitable it is with you, okay? So, some are short-term and some are long-term. Okay, and there are days, years at which you are supposed to pay back. Okay, then we also have the leases, vehicle lease, equipment lease. This takes two to three years. Okay, when we say personal loans, loans these are loans that take out uh, their personal credit and use for the business. They may have a fixed term or a revolving term. Then we have leases. Leases are properties uh, are debt secured for the rights to use specific property. It could be automobiles, it could be equipment, it could be land, okay. Uh, this can take two to three years with a purchase offshore at the end of the term variable. This also depends on the term at which it's being offered to you. Then we have the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, loans and bonds. This is peer loans, loans from individual. These are usually short term, okay. And the money is usually very small, not big compared to the commercial loans and the leases or personal loans. Okay, now let's move on. Now we're going to look at the advantages, the pros and cons of uh, debt financing. The uh, now let's start with the promissory notes. Okay, this is written. It's a written promise to pay a specific sum of money on or before a particular date. Then we're going to look at principal, the amount of, of debt or, or loan before interest and fees are added. Then leverage financed by debt as opposed to equity. In this, the lender, in all of this, the lender actually has to say in the operation of the business. The people who has given you the money have no say in the operation of his business. As long as you keep with the terms and agreement, as long as the loan payments are made on time and loan terms are made. Then, the lender will have a say in how the funds are initially disbursed. That is a disadvantage. They're going to tell you they are the one that will determine how it's convenient for them to disburse it to you, okay? And they set restriction. restriction. They, they actually brings the, the, the terms. You know, we talked about terms, right? The terms of this loan, they set it. They set the rule, which you must abide by. Most times you have little or no say in terms, in regards to terms. Now, let's look at debt disadvantage, okay? If loan payments are not made, we are still looking at it, right? Now, if, the, if loan payments are not made, the lender can force the business into bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. They will make you, uh, uh, they can take all, uh, all of your business, especially businesses that have... Uh, no limited liabilities, okay? They are not registered as uh, limited liabilities. They face uh, bigger risk with this type of uh, debt, debt disadvantage. Then, at the same time, if it's even limited liability kind of company, registered as limited liability kind of company, you still you can still be bankrupt, but this time it will not extend to your personal property, except the property that has to do with the company, the registered company. Uh, however, it's, uh, it's quite risky losing your property to a debt you are, you are unable to pay. So this is why we I kept uh, emphasizing on the terms, right, that you should pay attention to the terms and see how suitable it is for you to meet up with. 
The another disadvantage is that the lender can take the home and possession of the owner to settle the debt that I already made mention. Okay, debt payments uh, uh, that I already mentioned. Let me clarify that I already mentioned if it's that is uh, conditional, if it's limited liability or non limited liability. Okay, a business that is uh, registered as a limited liability sometimes you have to you don't have to pay with your your personal possession except uh, the business uh, possession okay because in business the the in in the rule of law a business is is uh, recognized as its own entity okay the owner is different from the i guess you've done your law okay you've done your business law the owner of the business is different from the business itself this is why you see cases where a, a person will sue a business, okay? So sue the business different from the press, the owners of the business. And there are cases where people sue the owners of the business, not the business itself. And sometimes they sue the business, not the owners themselves. So they are usually, uh, uh, for a registered business, the business is seen as an entity of its own and the owner is seen as an entity of its own. Okay. They are never taken as one. That's why it's a registered business uh, limited liability. Then debt payments increase a business fixed cost. Yeah, but lower is profit because as you as you as you pay your profit margin will be small. You make profit, so wow, it's a lot. This is huge. But then by the time you pay your debt, you have little or nothing to yourself. Okay. At the same time, it also increases your fixed cost. If it's increasing your fixed cost, let's say for example, you 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 it's an equipment, right? You've taken loan for. So if you if you took the uh, the debt to buy an equipment, as you are paying, that means your the value of uh, your ownership, the ownership value of the of whatever you've used the debt for, becomes uh, uh, increases, right? Becomes you yours it's your fixed cost. It becomes yours. Okay, it becomes your property. Repayment reduces available cash, cash, especially uh, cash at hand. As you pay, the cash at hand reduces. Lenders expect regular financial reporting and compliance with the loan contract. So moving on, let's we still we still on the debt. And now we're going to talk about the advantages. The lender has no say in management or direction of the business as long as the loan payments are made and contracts are not uh, valid, validated. Your lender has no business with your business, okay? <laughs> it has, does not have any say in how you're going to run your business, uh, what decision you make about your business. He's only interested in the money he has given you and has to be paid back. Only that. And if you have paying back the money on the agreed terms and condition, they, you, you totally shut them up. They do not have any right on your business, okay? You only have right on the loan, the money they've given you and which you are expected to pay back. Low repayments are predictable. They do not change with the fortunes of the business. So if you have taken a loan and your business is growing very, very fast, the loan cannot change, okay? It's fixed. The interest is fixed. Yeah, you've taken a loan of, for example, fifty thousand, and you are expected to pay back in uh, in a space of six months. And so, luckily, before the end of the six months, your business has grown so much, and your profit margin is huge. It's very, very big. So the lender cannot come and change that fifty thousand to hundred thousand, okay, and tell you, oh, you borrowed fifty thousand. So because your business is so successful. You are expected to pay hundred thousand. No, it doesn't work that way. You are only going to pay fifty thousand, and if the 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 interest rates, the percentage, will still be same. If it's two percent or three percent, it's still going to be same. Okay, this uh uh the percentage probably for the cost of giving you the loan, everything will still be the same. It doesn't change. Just the way if you are losing, does it, it doesn't does it consign them. You have to pay, okay? Whether you are running at a loss, it doesn't consign your lender. You have to pay. So if you are running at a very high profit, you're making a lot of profit, it still does not consign them. 
you get it. So the 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 it goes. The agreement continues whether you make it profit or not. But looking at the advantages, is if you are making huge profit, you are making profit. It does not still change. Still, you are still going to go with the agreement and pay what you own the only without any increase on the loan. Okay, now. Low payments can be set up so that they are matched with the seasonal sales of the business. You can as well try to pay your loan at the time when you make more money. This should be, this is usually better in the agreement time when you people are still negotiating on the agreement, coming to terms with the agreement, okay? So it's very flexible. You can as well take advantage of that and agree to pay when you make, uh, when your business is at its best. At the period when you make lots of money more uh, compared to the periods when you make little or nothing the lenders do not share in the business profit they do not have they do not share your profits they are just low lenders so they you just pay to them what you own them we have equity financing okay equity it's uh, It's, it's having a percentage of ownership in a company. Okay? So when we say equity financing means you have to bring money, okay? You give money and you in and in return you have a you become a percentage owner owner of the company. Okay? So these are also uh for example for the twenty one twenty thousand investment uh uh, discussed previously, an equity investor might want ten percent ownership. Uh, okay, for the case studies examples that were given in the previous slides. Okay, I don't need to go that go there. So now, if the equity will tell you, I'll give you one hundred. The equity financial can say investor can say I give you one hundred twenty thousand, and I want ten percent ownership of the company, which would mean ten percent of the business profit. 10% ownership means that whatever percentage you've given, that is a percentage of the profit the person is going to be getting when the profit hits uh, declared. Okay. So the investor hopes that 10% of the profit will provide a rate of return over time on the initial investment of 120000 Also, this equity finance, this uh, 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 the, the rate of return is determined by the entrepreneur. At the same time, it can also be negotiated by the investor. Especially investors that uh, have a lot of money, they can negotiate with you and say, I'll finance the business, but this is what I want. Now, at the same time, you could also set the terms and say, if you invest this, you get this. All this depends on how good you can negotiate, okay? Or how needy you are, okay? Sometimes all this affects like I already mentioned, the, the, the type of business you are doing, where you're doing it, your preference, your what you want, all the time, all this uh, will at play when you make all of this uh, decision. So we're going to look at the pros and cons of equity financing, just like the way we've looked at the one for debt financing. Equity investors assume great greater risk than the debt lender. You know, the debt just giving you money, he or she does not consign himself or itself with uh, whether you make it profit or not. But the equity financial is, the equity financing is different. Uh, if the business does not make profit, the investor will not make profit. And if the business is making profit, the investor will make profit. So money raised via equity does not have to be paid back unless the business is successful. However, if the entrepreneur gives more than 50% ownership, control of the business may be taken over by the equity owners. This is one of the disadvantages because the more you sell, the less hold you have on the business. The more you sell the shares of the business, okay, oh, you want more money. So people should come and invest. The less uh, ownership you have. So, the re one of the biggest things is that the 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 person with the highest biggest ownership of the uh the business highest shares or more shares is actually the owner of the business this is why entrepreneurs can lose their business to other people 
that were not even there where the business started. However, these are decisions you have to really think about before you make in terms of selling the shares, okay, or looking for equity investors. All of these are something you must look at. Entrepreneur, you must be a man that if you sell more than 50% of your shares out, that means you will lose control of the business because all of these shareholders will be part and parcel of the decision making of the business. How the business will be run, who you are employing, especially at the director's levels, and who you are not supposed to employ. Now we're going to look at the advantages of equity. Ad. Let's focus on the advantages, then we will also talk about the disadvantage. One of the advantages is that if the business does not make a profit, the, uh, the investor does not get paid. There are no required regular payments in the form of principal or interest and dividends of, for common com, uh, stockholders are distributed in the discretion of the board of directors. Okay, all this I mentioned. The equity investor cannot force the business into uh, bankruptcy in order to recoup the investment. And the equity investor has an interest in seeing the business succeed. Just the way you have interest for the success of the business, so also they have the interest too. And may therefore offer FO advice and provide valuable contacts. These are the advantages. Now you do not bear the problems of the business alone. Just the way they share profit with you, they will also share the problems, the challenges that come with the business. Everyone come together and uh, deliberate on how best to solve all of these uh, 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 bottlenecks as they crop up in the process of doing the business. Now let's focus, let's look at the disadvantage, okay? With, uh, specifically, let's look at the uh, specific disadvantage. One is that through giving up too much ownership, you might just lose control of the business. Okay, that I already mentioned. The champion must share profit with all equity investors. Your profit must be shared. Just the way you share the problems too, the loss or whatever challenges that comes with it. The equity financing is riskier for the investor. For those that are actually investing or taking of uh, financing, either the equity financing method is very risky for you. So you could, as an as an um, financial, okay, financials are also entrepreneurs in a way. You should consider like debt financing, or you could you because equity financing and debt financing, there are all types of financing method. So you could also consider debt financing, and avoid the risk of uh, uh, losing your money as an investor, or. You could as well go ahead and and finance and enjoy the benefits as an uh, as an investor, equity equity financial, and enjoy the benefit of being an investor. So, uh, it's uh, so it's it's frequently both to be able to, I mean, for example, she frequently wants both to be able to influence how the company is run and to receive a higher rate of return than a lender. Because if you, are, as an equity financier, you will be part and parcel in running of the business, manage the affairs of the business in decision making. But at the same time, and also get high rate of returns. Or like the debt, the, the, it's the, the, the debt is fixed and the rate is fixed. The business making profit or loss does not concern you. Everything is fixed. Okay, no matter how small the uh, amounts of equity is, investors may still interfere with the business via unsolicited advice and or continuous inquiries. You, they must know it's their right. They need to be updated, and they must know if they ask, you have to give them. Uh, there must be transparency, okay? Because the business is no longer just for you. You all own it, okay? As far as they put in their, their, their investors, okay? They are financing through equity. So how do we get capital that best suits the type of business you are trying to do? Now we've talked about uh, financing talked about the different types of finance, the financing, and we specifically talked about the advantage and disadvantage of equity financing and debt financing. 
and we also measured many more okay so now let's see how do you raise capital this is very important like the beginning of this class i mentioned that how financing is very important and how business cannot uh, continue if there is no financing so the decision of where to seek capital is very complex and the options that are available will depend on both personal and business factors So, as, a, as an entrepreneur, you must explore multiple potential options and try to, um, you could also create a financing mix. Like, it uh, doesn't have to be one way, you can combine all of the financing mix, like debt financing, equity financing, I mean, whichever way you feel it's uh, okay and fine, you can actually use then having an excellent let's look at your business plan one of the way to easily get capital is having an excellent business plan this goes a long way in boosting the business in all aspects especially when you seek for your financing the quality of your business plan could make the difference between success and failure i remember in our previous class we tried to talk about how to prepare a business plan what should be in it and how uh, what not to be in it and we also measured how you should have a pitch area which a very good summary called executive summary which you don't people don't have to read in details okay most times financials are usually very busy okay they have a lot of uh, business plans to read so the uh, concise, the the easier you make it, the 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 the, the easier it's easy to read. It's, you have to make your business plan easy to read and understand and concise. It's better. Okay. Now we uh, we're going to look at family and friends. Uh, we're going to look at the other types of. Uh, how capital sources read your business plan, family and friends, okay, in terms of your uh, in lending money from them. If they, if, uh, or that is, if you, are, if you are going to uh, loan money from your family and friends, you must explain to them that it's a loan. They will only earn back the amount of the loan plus interest, okay. There must be clear-cut understanding. And most times, business is business. This should be put down in writing, okay? There is no uh, bringing in uh, emotions into this because the business is an entity of its own and just like you as an entity of its own. I mean, you must be, there must be clarification. There must be boundaries, uh, set rules, uh, whether they are your family or friends or it's someone, whether formal and informal person to you. They are clear that equity is more risky. You must let them know the options, the equity financing and the debt financing. You, must make, you, you should be very transparent to them with this. The advantages and the disadvantages and uh, the benefits, okay? All this must be well, uh, uh, should be well known to them, okay? I claim that equity is more risky than debt, but explain that the potential for reward is much higher. Then you have to be careful not to take money from friends and family members who could not afford to lose it if the business fail. Okay? And be sure that any financial agreements are properly documented. Okay? Never you downplay that. Feel, oh, it's my friend. It's my because over time all of these are taken for granted. Or sometimes you can even forget about how this uh, the agreement, if it's just verbally. But if it's documented, it's, you can actually easily make reference to. So not just documented, it should be signed by the parties consigned so that there is, there is no misunderstanding later. Then we also have, apart from family and friends, we also have what they call peer-to-peer -peer lending. Okay, this one could be crowdfunding models which uh, include peer-to-peer -peer lending are very popular these days, okay. There are platforms for this, a lot of pl uh, platforms. They connect uh, prospective borrowers and lenders virtually, virtually and earn revenues based upon transaction fees. They make their money. Okay. 
Okay. Lenders can, you can actually search the peer-to-peer -peer site to find projects they want to fund and they are interested in, okay? That interest them, then they, they try to meet their risk tolerance and interest any requirements while they do this. These are uh, sites, they actually assess the risks of the loan sets, the risks of the loan sets, uh, sets of the terms of loan and prices, okay, if uh, prices, and also account for the, and also accounting for its fees. Now moving on, we, this is, uh, we're going to look at financial institution and dimension of credit. Now we're going to look at credit worthiness. What are the criteria? What do they look at before you are considered you are credit worthy? If you look at it, we have uh, three aspects, uh, five aspects that is looking to the character is looking to capital, collateral, condition, capacity. When we say collateral, collateral is property or other assets which are pledged against the loan. That the lender can take and say if the loan is not if not repaid then character it's uh is typically analyzed uh, this is analyzed in the form of the owner's um, personal credit ability that means the uh, personal credit means the ability of the owner to borrow money okay in the entrepreneurial contest I mean, it is can can the person uh, borrow money? Okay, is he actually doing business? Okay, what kind of business is he doing? What is asking for? Does it match with what is uh, his cost? Does it match with his request? All of all of these are looked into. Then we also have capacity. The capacity is uh, the business cash flow, which must be sufficient to cover the regular low payments and expenses then it must be that the amount you are borrowing the business should be able to generate the the payment okay they try to weigh they try to weigh this and see that you're not very borrowing more than what the business can afford to pay your debt service is the amount you will have to pay over a given period until the loan is uh, repaid so they make sure you can pay the debt service then we also have, uh, let's see, we've talked about capital. Okay, now let's talk about capital. We've talked about character, capacity, and uh, collateral. Now let's talk about capital and condition. Uh, capital is uh, uh, when, when the creditors need to understand how much of your own money you've invested. In your business and whether your friends or family have also invested they want to know this how is your capital made up okay is it is it uh, all debt and you are needing more or is it family or friends you they all want to know all of this then condition is the last uh, factor this is the state of the industry and economic climate at the time the loan is issued and jury is anticipated time so all these are, are criterias they look into before they decide if you are credit worthy or not so moving on now let's look at uh, these terms when we say credit credit is three all of these terms uh, come into play when you try to uh, when you negotiate or they try to look at the credit worthiness of the entrepreneur Credit is the ability to borrow money, okay? Credit history, a record of credit extended, and the repayment thereof. Then we have the credit reporting agency, okay? These uh, are varies from country to country, or the area at which you operate. Depends on where you are operating the business from. Mm -hmm. They actually the organizations that collect, analyze, and receive information supplied by financial institutions and others who extend credit. So we have debt service, personal guarantee, and charge accounts. Okay. Uh, the amount a borrower is obligated to pay in a given period until a loan is repaid. Personal guarantee, the promise to pay issued by an individual, and charge account, 
Credit is sent by company allowing qualified customers to make purchases up to a specific limit without paying cash at the time frame. So all these are the terms you can look on yourself. Now, so since we're talking about financial uh, institution, now let's look at community development banks. We all know what banks are. They are financial institutions that are actually set up to, it could be private or government, to uh, facilitate the financial activity, finance and economic activities of every uh, uh, place they operate on. So we have community development banks. These are actually set up to help economically help distressed community through targeted lending and investing. This works to the grassroots level. So they are for-profit corporations with community representation on their board of uh, directors. So uh looking at uh, depending on the individual charter such banks are regulated by the combination of the federal uh, uh, federal insurance i mean federal deposit insurance corporation like uh, uh, like i earlier said these are regulated by the government of such uh, places where these banks operate okay community development credit unions they actually we also have what they call community development credit unions these promote ownership of assets and savings and provide affordable credit and retail financial service to low-income individuals often with special access to the minority communities they are non-profit financial corporations owned by their members credit unions are regulated by the national credit union as administration okay this for USC, this can vary with other parts of the world. I mean, the country where you are. So these are things on your own. You can just find out where you are now, or probably where you have your business. Try to see how these community development credit unions, if they are there, how they are regulated, how they carry out their operations. Okay, all these are things you can actually do on your own. Researches you can actually do on your own for knowledge seek so you can also find out about the community development okay the achievements their challenges i mean a lot of people are doing researches on this aspect of um, um, financial institutions i mean the community banks and they discuss a lot of how, how how far they've come okay what they're doing and what they they are they uh what they are doing and how they've been regulated so moving on on today's class, we're going to look at community development venture capital funds. This is also different from the previous I already mentioned. The community development venture capital funds provide equity and debt with equity features for small and medium-sized businesses in distressed communities. They are very, uh, this type of banks are set up for a specific purpose. I mean, they are specific purpose in communities. They can be either for profit or not profit and include community representation. They are strictly for the community. And most times they 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 most times they don't kind of uh, offer this service to people who are not of that uh, community because they are set up for those uh, community. They don't want to lose their focus or purpose or the resources diverted to where they are not uh, what they what they were not aimed at so we these are websites where you can see community development financial institutional resources and there are many more okay there are many more websites i mean you can actually browse to get uh, funding from okay it's not as if it's easy sometimes you have to there are criterias uh, sometimes uh they they there are criterias requests they ask you to do this do that they want to see your business plan they want to see your registration and stuff like that and they sometimes interview you and there are many more many many of them you can actually check them out then uh we we have what they call the venture capitalist uh, venture capitalists are investors whose specialty is financing new and high potential entrepreneur companies and second stage companies and uh, most times they expect to earn six to ten times their money back over five years uh, period 
they will invest in your business finance it okay from the scratch in six to five years time they are going to collect their money back in six to ten times six to ten times the money they've put into that business usually these are agreements something you must agree to before they even venture into putting their funds in that business there's this the agreement that is documented and signed and uh, they monitor the business okay yeah that is their business uh, that is why they are there they monitor the business they aid you and see what you're doing and things like that venture capitalists uh, typically reap the return their equity investment in one of the two ways either by selling their percentage shares of the business to another investor through a private transaction or by waiting until the company goes public I mean, the company just go public and trading their ownership shares for cash by selling them. I mean, pop, the, pop, uh, the company going public means they're going to public limited liability, means they sell out to the public, people buying shares from them. It could be internationally, okay, or nationally. I mean, other people can just, uh, people they don't know. This does not have to be friends and families they know. I mean, not private, it means now it's public. Anyone can just come and buy shares. They sometimes the venture capitalists they get their money back in this way too. And they could either go for the first option or they do this the second option. So we also have what they call the angel investor. Angel investor is different from the venture capitalist. We have more of the venture capitalists. Okay. Now angel investors they if your business does not meet the high flying profit picture that will attract venture capitalists or does not require so much financing it might still be interest to angel investor they are called angel investor you can see by their name what they do they just as far as your business has uh, you have good business plan good proposal and you have good management in place and a solid uh, uh business going on for you they just might invest in it and they are not uh they don't tension you to pay back and sometimes they don't even take anything back from you they just finance the business just for humanity's sake okay a wide individual invest in businesses the most times these NJ investors can be individuals or corporations they just invest in business NJ tends to seek return of 10 times the event at the end of her but their requirements vary widely like i said sometimes they don't take back sometimes they take back but usually they are they are their approach to financing your business is kind of way more uh more acceptable by most uh, entrepreneurs okay Angels can be hard to find, but the challenge about this type of financials is that they are very difficult to find. They prefer manufacturing. These type of people, they have areas, specific areas they invest in. Not all areas. Most times it's about technology, energy, uh, or service business. Okay, and these days you see a lot of angel investors in in, in businesses that has to do with. Uh, I mean, conserving the nature, right? Like recycling, all of this, they, they, they focus more in that area now, these days. However, uh, angel investors are there, out there, okay? They are hard to find anyway. At the same time, if you find them, they might not be interested in the type of business you're doing. They mostly focus on manufacturing, energy, technology, and uh, some service business. And they try to avoid these retail ventures of uh, buying and selling like that. Then we have peer-to-peer -peer investments. This is different from the venture capitalist, different from the angel investor, and it's also uh, it's on its own it's different. Okay, this is uh, the this peer-to-peer investment. They they kind of have platform. They connect owners and potential investors virtually. I earn revenue based on poor transaction fees. They collect fees from you and they do it, okay? So, however, never you put your, when you seek for this type of service, never you pay first, okay? Let them give you the investor first and make things working and rolling before you do. Because a lot of foresters there, they tell you that they have angel investor for you or they have a capital, uh, what do you call it? 
they have angel invest they have a venture capitalist for you and they have all of this for you a peer-to-peer -peer investment stuff and you should pay and you pay up and at the end of the day you lost both your money and you never get to see any investor so you should be careful out there then we have insurance uh, companies they are policy loan a loan made against uh, the gift policy like a policy note and you know this is a loan made against an insurance policy with cash value then we have business owners uh, uh, business owner may uh, obtain a policy loan. This is uh, which is made to which is made to a business using a whole life, variable life, or universal life, and insurance policy based on policy cash surrender value. So, actually, in essence, the owner is borrowing against personal savings when they use this. Then we have vendor financing. Uh, this kind of creates a time between a payment transaction and when the cash is actually in the pays account. Entrepreneurship frequently benefit from the achievement of trade credit from vendors. Okay, so first is by eliminating the need for cash in advance or at the time of purchase. Business can hold on to the money for a longer period of time and, uh, and uh, we have enough time to or we have more time to generate cash for payment. You, they could also negotiate best possible payment terms with your with the suppliers in advance, so that your business can use float to have as much cash on hand as possible. Okay, these are these are for vendor financing. Means you try to create time, and we have enough uh, create time and have enough time to. To do uh have enough time with the cash why would you then we have federal supported investment companies uh, these are uh, when government they support investment companies this one's for economic and uh, economic purpose economy and development purpose most times economic and growth development purpose so we this is for the u.s and like i had said you should try find out about the place where you are okay how they operate yes uh, like the u.s governments uh they support the establishment of several privately owned and managed investment funds primarily licensed and run by small business uh administration that they use their that use their own capital plus money borrowed with federal guarantee to make equity and debt investment in qualifying small business sometimes they may provide debt or equity for early stage companies that otherwise could not obtain financing. Okay, then we have financing for rural and cultural businesses. They also uh, they also finance uh, rural and agricultural businesses. Like for example, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, we have the USDA. Okay, that is the USDA. The U.S. Department of Agriculture USDA has a long tradition of providing financial and technical assistance to rural and cultural businesses through a variety of programs. Okay, and I think many other countries they have all of this. Especially uh, when you are doing uh, businesses that has to do with agriculture, yeah. I mean, the government have programs, subsidies, they support financially, and they assist. Okay, with equipment. Sometimes they subsidize so that uh, they subsidize these entrepreneurs that are into these agricultural businesses. Then we have what they call self-funding, which is a bootstrap financing. Okay, self. I mean the bootstrap. We have the bootstrap financing. This is uh, financing a business by creatively stretching stretch, stretching existing capital as far as possible, include extensive use of the entrepreneur's time. So if you can not secure bank, venture, or an um, uh, angel financing, it does not mean that your business model idea is not good. Okay, it may be that it does not uh, fit their criteria, like I already mentioned. So the most important thing is that you should uh, take in a, a positive uh, criticism. I mean, you should take criticism, constructive criticism, and try to work on your business plan or business if it's already running and improve on what you're doing. Okay. Uh, and also take recommendations too from the financing sources or you do not fund you 
like for example like this um like this uh capital uh, what do you call it this uh, uh venture capital or angel financing or bank financial institution when they reject your proposal to, of uh, your proposal to be financed they usually give reasons so for every reasons they've given and some they go as far as giving you recommendation whatever reasons or recommendation they give you try to work on it and improve on your on your business plan or your business before you apply for the next one okay this will uh, kind of way a long way in uh, uh, in getting any of these uh, financials then we have you can also access sources through online like this one we have the this uh you use uh, you can use search engines such as google bing site and yahoo to find websites for entrepreneurs uh, they are entrepreneur organizations okay the more people who are aware of your product or service and its benefit the more likely they are to buy it or refer you to someone who will do so so you should try to be connected to other groups that are doing similar thing like you okay and they could actually give recommendation referrals customers that will boost your business however like i mentioned earlier be wary of any business that require upfront payment mean this upfront payments that's an easy way for businesses entrepreneurs to be duped and they will not provide complete references or in any other way raise a red flag they, they have a way of you should be very conscious of the way they they do things they don't give you complete references they ask you for upfront all these are red flags that you should watch out for the investor want their money to grow can you make it happen this is a very good question it's not just collecting money from investors they are not giving you the money because they just feel like doing away with the money they want the money to grow they want to collect returns can you make this happen so there are three categories of financial events that can provide funds true stocks bonds cash okay cash and something you can easily convert to is cash or anything you can easily convert to money within 24 hours then we have bonds, they are loans that made to companies or government this is for more than one year. And we have stocks, stocks, shares of company ownership equity. So these are way which you, are, you can actually get money from investors. Okay, but then the is is it's about you getting the money, but what is what is about them is how will they grow the money? I mean, they want the money to be grown. So as an entrepreneur, these are things you must think. Can you actually make this money grow before you collect it from these investors? Because the greater the potential reward of an investment, the riskier it probably is. So all these are things, uh, factors you must bear in mind. Then we have share a single unit of corporate stocks. A corporation, whether privately held or publicly traded, is owned by stockholders and public corporations sell their stock to the general public to raise capital so stocks may be either preference or common shares right? when they buy gold they are common we have common or we have preference shares preference shares usually they have fixed interest rate whether the company is making profit or not they get paid okay and it's usually very high the cost of being a preference shareholder is usually very high compared to the common one the common one only gets paid when the prof the business is making profits and when the business is not making profits they don't get paid so you should read more about that and we have how stocks work the stock market is more than one location it is made up of every country has a stock market okay if you go public that means um, your shares should be in the stock market it's made up of a collection of exchange around the world where stocks are traded okay so like example we have the new york uh, stock exchange we have the nigeria stock exchange we have the malaysia stock exchange so most well known they are these uh these ones all the stock exchange uh, are well known okay okay this electronic exchange that is home so many new and high technology stocks in the nasdaq so you can actually check uh you as a trader you can check your stock prices with just your computer even these days even with your phone 
it's so very flexible and convenient to have access to all of this information compared to days before now uh years before now rather so we have how bonds work we still on that so security and investment instrument representing ownership and entity stock or debt bond held by investor then when we say maturity the date at which a loan must be paid repaid this is the maturity date then we have face value, the amount of a bond, also known as par, to be repaid by the corporation or government or at its maturity date. Then we have the par, this is face, face value of a bond, and the stated value of a stock. Then we have what they call the premium, the amount above par for which a bond is trading in the market. Then we have discount. The difference between a bond's trading price and its par value when the trading price is below par. Okay, that's all for today's class, and uh, thank you.